Salve, tribo! Passando para pedir para você se inscrever no canal, porque ajuda bastante a gente. E não esqueça de deixar o like, um bom vídeo para nós. Estamos aí, oficialmente. Vou deixar o chat também na tela. Então, pelo que eu entendi, tá? Eu não vi muita coisa. O Apocão foi assistir hoje. Eu, eu tirei para não tomar spoiler. Mas, aparentemente, o pessoal... né? Tem o Ed aí, mas não, tem, não é nem por isso, velho. Mas, ó, pessoal... A Red Bull lançou Memórias do CSGO, os anos, tipo, os anos que passaram, né? Vamos ver se dá pra... Memories. Oi. Se não vai atrapalhar. Count the strike is full of them. Oh, my goodness. Where do we start? Cara, From the wins. Cara, off, in fact. Oh, this is an insane life, you know? Yeah, can I have the cold part too? Damn, son. Hell yeah. The losses. To this day, I still haven't looked at that game. I haven't oh, looked at that vlog. And the goodbyes. This moment, this moment, uh... Se chama felicidade. The past 10 years of CS have taken us from bedrooms to sold out arenas. Ah, how did this right. come about? Oh, viola oh. boost. Who to sold out arenas? Olha aí, ó, tá vendo? Olha essa imagem. Vai ter umas coisas que eu vou pausar, senão não é react, né? Mas olha aí, ó, vocês falando do Donk chorando, ó. Olha essa imagem. Aqui. But how did this come about? Oh, Who drove things forward? And Olha, where presente. did this all start? Pega pipoca aí, né? Será que vai ter o Brasil? Como, né? Memórias do CSGO. Aí, ó, um bom conteúdo. God de Tom aí, ó. O Tom Newman. O um novo homem, o um novo Tom aí, ó. Olha o cinco decade, chocado no Brasil. I've had the pleasure of commentating on some of Counter Strike's most historical moments. In this film, I'll be looking back at the early years, a journey that began in 2012 when Valve released Counter Strike Global Offensive. This kickstarted a race to the top, a push to be declared the best. But who was leading the charge? Olha o Forest aí, ó. Tixa. Sempre com o bonezinho, né? Oi, oi, oi. O que eu vejo aqui? Muito boas memórias e muitas boas memórias. CSGO. A foto diz tudo. Ou, agora faz, pelo menos. CSGO foi lançado em... O que foi? 2012, eu acho. <laughs> What a shit game it was, <laughs> let me tell you. <laughs> I think when you look back to 1.6 final year, you saw a lot of tournaments pulling out. Um, you saw the salaries of teams getting less and less. We don't have a sponsors, we don't have you know, money for living. Uh, some very important guy told us there is a no chance global offensive will be big as uh, 1.6. So you need to guys like find a way to to join like a normal, normal oh, life. It was getting to a point where it got really bad. I actually started working uh, towards the end of uh, 1.6, like a part-time job. It was definitely on its way out. And, and CSGO became like the savior of, of the construct genre, for sure. Uh, CSGO in the beginning though was not very beautiful. It lacked a lot of things that people did like about Counter-Strike. Uh, kind of how the movement felt, how responsive it was, how the gunplay worked but as the years went on and on it became one of the I, no, not one of the the best first person shooter ever made hands down mano aqui é muito louco né porque é um negócio que o Forrest está falando velho e que eu falo para vocês velho qual que é a diferença a gente briga a gente reclama mas é o, o Gaben ele sempre deixou isso muito claro pra gente, né? Porque o CS, 
A Valve ela não criou o CS. O CS é uma modificação do Half-Life. Quem criou o CS foi a comunidade, velho. Né? Foi uma pessoa da comunidade que criou essa modificação e ela foi ficando mais popular que o próprio jogo, né? Então, quando teve o CS 1.6, que nem era 1.6, o CS Beta, o jogo não era bom. O jogo era legal. O jogo era né, um jogo que, que você sentia emoções e tal, mas o jogo você jogava e sabia que tinha muita coisa para melhorar. E você ajudava esse jogo a ser melhorado todos os dias. Falando no fórum, mudando isso daqui, inventando regra, competindo, jogando e por aí vai. Quando o CS 1.6 acabou, todo mundo falava que era o melhor jogo, tá ligado? Todo mundo falava, pô, o CS 1.6 é o melhor jogo da história, por que, que vai mudar pra esse jogo lixo? E o CS GO chegou, além né, de ter outros jogos, né? Teve ali CS Source e tudo mais, Condition Zero, mas quando o CS GO chegou... O jogo mostrou aí, né? Às vezes você não pegou essa época, às vezes você não era nascido, às vezes você era muito jovem, às vezes você não acompanhou. E o CSGO também chegou muito mal, né? Quer que tire o chat? Eu não sei. O chat é uma forma aí, velho. Chiu aí, chat, não tem o que fazer. Deixa o chat, velho. E aí, velho, o CSGO chegou e também era muito mal feito, velho. Só que, mais uma vez, velho, não é um jogo em que tira o chat pedindo para tirar o chat, então beleza, ó. então, aí ó, aí, o chat votou, uma loucura, uma loucura, tá vendo, a comunidade, ela faz o negócio ser melhor, se tá ruim a comunidade fala, se tá bom a comunidade ajeita e por aí vai, mas voltando, o CSGO também é a mesma coisa, velho, então o jogo tinha muito problema, Vários pro players falou caramba, velho, esse jogo tá um lixo, eu não vou jogar CSGO, esse jogo vai destruir o CS e tudo mais, e velho, o jogo foi sendo construindo pelo, pela comunidade e virou o jogo que virou. Olha o Forest falando, o melhor jogo de FPS que já existiu. E o CS2 é a mesma coisa, rapaziada. Né? Cal, está bom? Não está bom. Mas não vai parar porque não está bom. A vida não é assim. Você não consegue parar a vida quando não está bom. Quando não tá bom, você arruma, mas você tem que continuar andando. Isso é a lição, velho, que de alguma forma muito louca, não é o Gaben que dá, é o CS que dá pra gente, tá ligado, velho? Se você for parar toda vez que não está bom, você se fudeu, tá ligado? Você tem que estar tá sempre melhorando. Então, ele te dá algo que ainda não tá pronto. Tem erros, tem gente que vai parar, tem gente que vai começar, tem gente que vai acreditar, vai ter gente que vai desistir e faz parte, tá ligado, velho? Então, é um jogo que não é uma empresa que chega e fala assim, joga isso daqui. É um jogo que uma comunidade é apaixonada há mais de décadas e continua jogando, né? Tira o vídeo nada, tira a câmera nada. Então, é só para vocês verem que hoje a gente vive essa realidade. O cara lança um jogo, o jogo tá muito bom. Passa um mês, as pessoas nem estão querendo jogar o jogo. Às vezes lança um jogo, o jogo não tá bom. Passa um mês, as pessoas não estão querendo mais jogar o jogo. Mas o CS ele vai sendo construído, né? De uma forma onde esse primeiro Major tem muita coisa que tá ruim, tem muita coisa que não tá funcionando. Mas vai melhorar, confia em mim, vai melhorar. E com um novo jogo, came a formação de novos new teams. So, how our team NIP got together? How we formed, how we got paired with each other. Where did it all begin? Our whole squad here. Freiburg exists, me, Fifler and Get Right, we're all looking very young. Uh, how did we start? How did we start? Get Right actually approached me. He said, like, hey, they want to start up NIP again. Uh, and I was like, cool, 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 cool. Well, I'm down. <laughs> don't, ask, don't ask to ask me twice to play. And then he approached Exist. And then initially we wanted to incorporate like okay, source players. Then. Since the engine in a Olha sense was the same thing. engine as source, we kind of wanted to get them in and get some more knowledge and just like see how it would fit. And it turned out that Fifaren was absolutely perfect. He had good in-game leading capabilities. He was very good at like understanding the game. And for the fifth player, which ended up being Freiburg, was not my go-to pick initially. But yeah, I got outvoted on that one. Which I'm happy about sometimes. Hey, <laughs> hey, you mess up, okay? I, I, I can admit that. Adam turned out to be the perfect fit. When the CSGO came up, uh, 
I don't know uh, I will continue my esports career. There is a fun, funny story because uh, I invite like a Tas and Neo to my wedding, and there already was like a, my future boss because I changed changed work. I, I left the esport, and then Neo and Tas asked my wife, "Please let him play CS:GO. Oh, there, is a, there is a future because player and IP playing, still playing. There is something something wrong. Why are they playing? For what? Once Friber was decided." Uh, get right uh, invited us all over to like a pool party Ooh. and it turned out that we like we all felt like we all became best friends that night uh, and uh, after a few hours of my wedding i came to my boss my future boss i say to him boss i came back to esport caramba velho olha aí tá vendo na no casamento o cara voltou pro chefe e falou eu vou eu vou arriscar velho with new teams forming and two scenes merging into one, it was only a matter of time until fresh rivalries were born. Olha a França aí, L DLC, né? Olha aí. Olha oh, shocks when aí. CSGO was released, it was really a big excitement because in CSS we were owning everyone in very games. Even myself, I remember in 2010, I moved to one point things for several months because I was like, there is no challenge on CSS, like it's just too easy and stuff. And when CSGO is coming out, this is the real test, you know, this is really like the real thing. We're gonna face the 1.6 monsters, the 1.6 legends. They came in with a style that I was not used to play against. Very structured, very tactical. They used a lot of strategies where they do this big ass, <laughs> big ass hits on a site where everything was timed perfectly with Nate's timing and everything and I was a little bit blown away. We had the, a lot of set things with smoke, flashes, just running in bomb side looking at the floor and stuff like that, you know, so that was that kind of stuff. Todo francês cozinha, né? This is existence. Many people say this is like a, the biggest brain in, uh, in CS. Yes. I can agree with this guy, the, the mastermind. Everyone which, uh, like a play versus them, lost. Everyone. Fifflearn and Freiburg coming from Counter-Strike Source, they were hyping these guys up like they were beasts. Beasts that could not be tamed, beasts that would eat us up alive. We had no idea what was coming for us. Of course, I knew about Forest, Get Right and stuff like that. And when I knew, like, I'm gonna face them, I was really excited because I wanted to show them that I can be better than them. So we are like the little brother on CSS and 1.6 was like the big brother. And we are looking at them and probably waiting for one day uh, where we can face them. And CSGO was actually like the perfect timing. Bon appétit. Oh, oh, omelette. They were supposed to be what we became in CSGO. They were supposed to be the ones dominating and having this sick win streak, obliterating um, the scene from the get-go. That was not the case, however. Uh, we played them, I can't even count how many times we played the guys. I can't count how many times we beat them. I can't count how many times we stole final from them. But they were actually an amazing team. Especially this guy. Everyone is scared of this guy. Like uh, the fastest, the quickest oh, sniper yeah, yeah. In, the, in, the, in the world. The best, very quick. <laughs> no one will work quicker. <laughs> Thank God. Really. Kenny S stuck in the site finding more. That's brilliant to Kenny S again. Up close on. Oh, my goodness, Kenny S. Uh, eventually they beat us, and again, and again. Uh, <laughs> so <laughs> eventually they did catch up to us. Uh, absolutely lovely rivalry though. Um, but at the same time, uh, it was very interesting and just like a way for me to learn and adapt even more, like to level up myself in a bit. Like, okay, they can do this, I can do that better. Nice out to Freiburg, it's a one versus two, but oh, no! Wow. Forest. The dream ender. We were playing so many times each other that it went to a point where after the finals we were drinking a beer all together. And now I can say, for example, Get Right, he's a close friend to me, you know. And it's actually crazy to think that more than 10 years ago, even 15 years ago, I was fan of someone who became my friend. It was definitely fun, but at Freiburg and Fifth Learn, definitely set the bar a little bit too high <laughs> in the beginning. And with those rivalries born, 
and the storyline set, all that was needed was a tournament to crown who was king. So with Counter-Strike Global Offensive came also something uh, that hasn't been done in, in 1.6 actually. We didn't have a 1.6 and what didn't exist in Counter-Strike before was like support from the developer. Uh, and in this case, Valve actually like, okay, hey, we want to make a tournament. Like the CS, like CSGO Major. First Major always is the most important like event. We're preparing for this a lot. We, we, we have a new players. We, we would like to show up for, for our fans, for, for war. Today, as people know, like the Major has been, become such a big part of the hype surrounding Counter-Strike. Uh, like weeks before, months before, who's going to perform? Who's going to underperform? Like which team is going to win? And this specific first one, I remember, was such a big thing for us uh, in NFP. This was actually, okay, hey, we're doing it big now. We, we, we need to win. We need to win. Let's focus. We finished like a CS 1.6 with some wins, and we, we hope we do it the same with CS Go. It was $100,000 for the winner, which was a lot of money. A lot of money. That's like, I think the first tournament we won was sitting at like $2,500. So this was like a big step up to like, holy smokes. We were the favorites to win, and we showed it as well during that major that we are the favorites. Yeah, this is yours, right? This is yours. You go up, grab it, grab the trophy, walk home, job is done. <sighs> we reached the final. <laughs> and then uh, in the final, like this team, if we would play that match over a series of 50 games, I, I think we would probably beat them 45 out of 50. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. They had some faces that were well known from uh, Hello. From looking at some old memories. Looking at some old memories. My friend was just actually speaking <laughs> about your about your win against oh, us. Uh, I, even, I even brought some if you want, some memories here. Mm -hmm. uh, one yeah, yeah. little bit more good for me and one good for you. <laughs> makes, so I went for a di dipl diplomatic approach there. <laughs> Make things a little bit better yeah. <laughs> when you arrive. Right, actually, but yeah. I, I was speaking about because you're. You guys were not that well known, right? You would. Hey, I'm gonna ask you the question. Yeah. Did you expect to win this final? Like honestly, because I, I, I was, I was sitting here saying that like we were probably heavy favorites. I mean, you were enormous fa favorites. Right? Yeah, because you guys haven't done really like anything before this. No, 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 right? We, no, we weren't. No, no, guys. I mean, we were such a random gang of players really on health if Gary could find him he goes for the fake he looks all around oh, e esse olha como começou né o spectator que eu falei para vocês ó depois teve mudanças e tal mas olha que good né tinha aqui ó a bandeirinha fanatic da Suécia nip da Suécia tal esse essa HUD ela, ela era muito legal né velho olha essa HUD olha a trenzinha aí né Caramba. And he can't find Snyder. Snyder's walking up here. Is he going to be able to do it? There's not much time. Geraint has to find this kill. He's not looking behind the barrel. He misses him. How did it happen? And now Snyder gets the kill. There's no doubt. 14 to 2. And that's the run. Look at him high fiving. Look and at the complete God, happiness on Fnatic God, right there. You did not expect this, did you, Anders? And then, you know, we just felt good. I don't know. There was this harmony, you know, you get yeah. sometimes when you go to a tournament where everything just feels right. It kind of stinks a... a little bit. Yeah. Hearing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I understand. É louco, né? Aqui mais uma um pause. Tá, teve uma vez que eu tive muita dúvida que eu falava assim, mano, é muito louco, né? É, na Olimpíada, por que que você, vai imaginar, né, tem a, a, as provas classificatórias, né, então você tem uma prova de 100 metros de corrida, né, uma prova em salto em altura e por aí vai, vocês sabem que você pode bater o recorde olímpico numa classificatória, mas aí se chegar na final, na prova final, e você perder, você não é o campeão, tá ligado? Então, existe isso nas Olimpíadas, né? De você olhar e falar assim, caramba, velho. Pô, o cara, ele pode correr na prova ali na semifinal, ele faz um número gigante e, de repente, bate o recorde olímpico, bate o recorde mundial, passa pra grande final e, na final, os caras, né? 
é, é, se ele não ganhar a prova final, ele perde a medalha de ouro. E eu ficava pensando, será que isso é justo? E é, velho, isso é o esporte, tá ligado? Porque, mano, olha o que aconteceu hoje, e é o que eu falo. Ah, Gal, mas a gente não tem chance. Ah, Gal, mas não dá pra gente ser campeão. Ah, Gal, mas os caras são maiores, eles são melhores, eles são mais inteligentes. Mas o esporte é isso, tá ligado, velho? O esporte, ele é o que você vai fazer quando o momento da prova chega, final chegar, tá ligado? Pode ser que em vários momentos a longo prazo, esse cara realmente ganhe mais finais, ele ganhe mais coisas e tudo mais. Mas existe um mundo onde, nem que seja por uma vez, o cara pode ganhar 45 de 50, o cara pode ganhar 49 de 50, mas às vezes ele vai perder a uma, que era a prova da grande final. Então, acredita, tá ligado? Sonha, quando você vai competir, sonha que você vai ganhar uma de 50, mas vai ser a uma de 50 na final. E ninguém nunca vai se importar com as 49 que você teria perdido. And there it is. Complete celebration. Dreamhack wins the 2013 champions. You've got them right here on your screen. And then came this legendary picture of you uh, putting down your path. But you have to tell me the story of que that. Que isso, Basically, baixando as calças só lá. This Norwegian guy won a tournament and he took his shirt off. Mm. And then I, I, I basically one up it, one up it, and said I'll take my pants off instead. Uh, and then I, won, I just had to do it, you know. Uh, and then it's, I, it's so funny when you see get right here. Yeah. <laughs> like that, actually. And he points his fingers. <laughs> yeah, imagine losing, yeah. You're losing yeah. major fucking. <laughs> then you see a guy pulling down his pants. Unbelievable. Obviously, you guys were were idols and. Um, You know, people we we all in our team looked up to. With that, Fnatic shocked the world to claim the first major title. But majors weren't the only thing that was new to CSGO. Eita. I'm about to redo my garage, don't judge me here. But we do have some pins here, this will be neat to look at. We got some of those, and I have something I don't think I told you guys about, this will be funny. Oh. Put this out here. Player card. Oh. <laughs> I actually don't even remember the company who made these. But so far my, my stats are Iceman, 97, Freestyling, 99, <laughs> Spray, 95, Entertainment, 96, Flashdance, 99. I think we could have bumped a couple of numbers there, but whatever. And we got all the lanyards, some of the CS knives. Look at these. Crambit. Honestly, not my favorite skin, though. I, I would have liked an M9 Bayo. I think I might have one. Shout outs to these guys. Oh my goodness. Where do we start? Uh... One thing that, um, that came with the majors itself, like eventually, what they did was. Um, they added stickers. They added not only team stickers, but they also added like individual autographs. Your name, Forrest, could be actually be in Counter-Strike. Or an IP logo on a gun? No way. To get my name like immortalized, so to speak, in the game was epic. I mean, now I have a couple of different types of stickers, a song in the game. All this stuff is just, is just super cool to me. And it's something that I could just show off literally if I'm just running around a public server and stuff. It's so funny when people could recognize like a, something on my profile, a little icon from a trophy or anything like that. It's, it's super cool. I think they even announced like some, some of the sales were going to go to the players, which was also like, oh, well, with this, hey, hey, <laughs> what are we talking about here? Huh? <laughs> What we also saw was an opportunity for fans to now support us directly in the game and for us to give them something cool that wasn't even, you know, even if we were selling them for 10 cents or giving them away for free, it was just like, you love the feeling when someone's wearing your jersey, it's the same as when someone's got your skin on their gun. I think I've been to a couple events, huh? See here. Oh, man. I'm glad we found Aww. these. Look at this. You can almost consider it the most important thing in this box because Half-Life Counter-Strike with the CD key on it oh, was, this is the origins here. Oh. Um, and a lot of you these days don't even know what this is. You guys can copy it even at this point. I don't know what it'll get you. Where? F. 
Melhor não mostrar não, velho. A conta da Steam tá linkada, velho. <risos> <risos> And she steals, <risos> smiling at me right away. Man, we got all the emotions. The liege crying. Wow, there's a lot here. So my first actual team that was basically pro team was Complexity here. Um, we kind of put together what we thought was the super team that we could at the time. Myself, Hiko, and Swag were considered three of the best, like 1.6 players at the time. The scene started growing and that's when, you know, the Source players and the other team, Steel Days, and those guys, uh, Nance Skadoodle was a new name here, started coming up adjacent kind of to our Complexity team and then that's kind of when we switched to Cloud9 in 2014. And Hiko was a big name there. Shroud kind of came out of the shadows and now starts to kind of become the C9 legacy uh, began right there. So Hiko, what was solid about him as a player, not only was his clutch ability and skill, but what was also really helpful with him early on was his role was kind of defined. He was like a lurker. He was, you know, edge of the maps. You know, he's going to kind of be alive last. And so you had something you could rely on. Creeping around the site now, there's still time. It's, oh my goodness, how does he do this? How does Hiko do it again? FLG. Yeah, Hiko started solidifying his clutch ability early on. I mean, obviously, um, what was it? Against Device in the team, uh, a Mirage. Yeah, so Hiko and Sean, that's a good kill from Hiko, but they realize Dupree's still in there somewhere. They're gonna try and go for it here. They want to go all in. Hiko comes in with another kill and back to a two on two. Oh, that but goes so far. Car. They gotta move quick right now. They're going for it. The defuse is already happening. Hiko, are you kidding me? He's gonna go for it. They win the round. Hiko! Hiko, are you kidding me? You know, I can't copy Enders. I won't try, but uh, obviously that same tournament, I think he hit that flick shot uh, on Dust 2. It is too late. Garrett is going to be waiting. Hiko charges in, doesn't check. Oh, what? Oh, oh my reaction. God, inhuman reactions. Shroud sitting at the end. We were next to each other at a lot of events. The first tournament with Shroud was Cologne, and we just was like, boom, he's on the team. We played online, boom, straight to Germany, boot camp. They're like, you're going to room with Jordan. He's like the veteran. So uh, it was funny. I, I showed him how to get a free breakfast because the hotel, I was like, listen, we just lie about what room we're in. These rooms get free breakfast. And he was just laughing and kind of like, he actually told me how much he looked up to me in the hotel room. Where I told him, I was like, listen, Mike, you look up to me, but I guarantee you, if you keep doing what you're doing, the roles are going to be reversed. And sure enough, man. Wait until they get close to the site here and shroud. I mean, probably one of the first guys that I saw that laser aim. It's now down to all of it. Oh, oh my God, he takes him down. And that's going to be close out nine, winning it back. It was the chance for a fresh start at uh, North American because we weren't necessarily the most respected region. Man, esses, esses, né? Essas regatinhas, velho. <laughs> and so, the scene began to grow. Whilst legends sat waiting for their chance at Major Glory. Warsaw, Warsaw. This is my famous wall. This is my team. I spent with them like more time than my family. This is like a test IGL. This is like a Neo also IGL. This is like a snacks, sometimes IGL. Our coach Kuban, Biali and the Papito, maybe not IGL, but they have like an eagle, eagle nose. Like here and I, of course, in my team, I was the sniper. Aí, was the best oh, in the Dragon game, Lord. Dragon Lord. Aí. Papito, o sotaque dele é muito god, né, o Papito? Losing the first major, heading into the second major, which, once again, it's not us lifting a trophy. <laughs> um, Virtus Pro, this major, um, Katowice. Katowice major. And we say, we're gonna play in the big stage, this is our goal. We, are, we will prepare for this. I always say, like a Polish crowd, show the world how you can help, how you can cheer from the crowd to the esports players. We believed in ourselves so much, and we were such a dominant team at that point, uh, that heading into the second major felt still like, okay, okay, we didn't win the first one, but we're definitely winning the second one. And as well, during this tournament run, we did um, what we always done, right? Winning. <laughs> I want to see a grand final versus uh, Virtus Pro. I think it's going to be the most amazing game ever. Uh, our team has prepared very well for this tournament, and we're happy to be in the final. We get up to the final, 
and it, it, it's against Virtus Pro at their home soil, Katowice, packed out. The matchup uh, versus an IP always was uh, hard. We know that wasn't be easy. No way, Neo and uh, Forest. There is like a always special atmosphere in our team. Neo always play the best Counter Strike, and Forest the same. But uh, we have advantage. Uh, NIP know we playing in front of our crowd. Very very good start and a very nice pistol round by Virus Pro, and everyone is cheering for them. It is just crazy. And I think in this day they playing the top level. I feel I feel it because I think they a bit scared. But this is my opinion. But I don't know their opinion. Virtus Pro as a squad was was scary. They like when people talk about scary. I, I know very games, right? People were talking about very ah scary. No, no, no. You don't know scary. These guys, Virtus Pro, they were scary. These are the type of guys you play against, and it doesn't matter if you're up like 14, one and a half. These guys would never, and I mean never, just give the game to you. Playing in Poland. Did you believe that you'd make it here? It was our goal. It was our dream, but it's not finished. The job is not done yet. Our aims are ready to change the champion, to change the number one in the world. Taking information, just going onto the A bomb side, and there's no one. Pasha gets the first kill. Pasha picks up the first kill. It's a headshot onto Get Right, and he'll put him down. I remember this was like a special final because after this match is starting, one by round, people cheering. No, even not round by round, but by kill by kill. On that A site, they've got four players in there, and Stacks coming in, gets himself a headshot onto Forrest, and every frag is being cheered on by the crowd. People went crazy, and this is what I remember. Every kill, single kill. So they were at one point, I guess, called the plow. Virtus plow is the if if the if the team give us you know chance win round by round, there is a no stop of us. There is a no button to stop us. Just machines, right? They could absolutely stomp opponents. You think you're winning, but then uh, suddenly the ignition turns on, vroom, and then they just start plowing. He will eventually go down at the hands of Pasha. They're three francs away now. Virtus Pro. The last round that was Inferno. That was like a four versus two. The, the bomb has been planted, and uh, there was a four versus one. It's all on Forrest. He gets the first. In this time, I already like a, like a vulcan, like a pumping, 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 pumping myself. Even even I am even Forrest, I think was alive. I am already like I think jumping. He doesn't get the second. Already jumping and uh, be happy, pump my biceps. I go to the snacks already to hug him, to feel my team. And we say, We did it. We did it. What we said like uh, one year ago, we're gonna play in the big stage and we won. We realized the plan. Maxim, nothing more. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for your EMS World Kadavita champion, Virtus Pro! Yeah, we did get plowed that final, actually. We did get plowed when I think about it. This is the first CSGO major final I played. I think I've been in five, where we lost 2-0. And it was not even close. So maybe the plow started from here. Who knows? Everyone was proud. Everyone was proud when we won Katowice, when especially I back home, like a people you know on the street. I don't even know the, the eSports, they congratulated me because the, everything you know was in television, media, media interesting. Even I go to my, to my city when I'm born, like uh, the government of the city, like uh, invite me the, to, the, to the building, give me some, you know, like a medal, some uh, papers, like a uh, flower. So I feel like a god, I feel like a god, first time in my, in my eSports career. And from this, from this moment, uh, I told many times, it's my, my eSports career, my personality, Pasha Biceps, growing up uh, till days after this event. So I would like to say thank you, thank you for, for, for ESL Katowice make this, uh, make this event. And that's, that's how I will remember my biggest, my biggest match, my biggest tournament, how we love our, my team, how we you know, stick together after many losses before we can always stand up and fight for the biggest achievements in the world. The camaraderie they had and the trust they had in each other uh, was a very beautiful thing to see, even in a rivalry team. It was so nice to see 
a squad being so like tight. They went on to be uh, for sure one of the best teams in in Count Freak. Absolute, absolute beasts. Right now I show you my the best achievement in my esports career. Two in one. One because I won the Katowice and second one I was the MVP of this event. So I wish every player that kind of moment. Won the best, most important event of the year and in the same time MVP of this event. This is me, Papito. <laughs> Papito. Biceps always with you. <laughs> If ever there was one thing that was for certain in CSGO, you eventually got what you deserved. I remember this one. This is uh, quite memorable for all of us. Uh, it's when we won our first uh, major uh, with NIP uh, after like struggling for <laughs> How many times was it? I think it was like three major finals we lost. Yeah, the relief winning this, finally, after two attempts earlier, to actually be able to win the major the third time uh, against Fnatic, um, it was a lot of doubt and pressure. And I think Getright's emotion uh, in this picture definitely uh, <laughs> speaks volumes uh, of how important that win was. I remember, well, was it? Was it Freiburg? Yeah. The 1v3 yeah. or 4? A 1v5, I think. Was it 1v5? Not 1v5, 2v5. Uh, Exist just runs away and hides. Ah, okay, he kills, okay, he kills yeah. the plant oh. when it's hidden. It's... Seal this round, it looked so good. Just a few seconds left here, 7, 6 left. Freiburg goes for the kill, he's going to pick it up. If just Exist survives, he's going to win the round, there's no time! Oh my god, Freiburg, are you kidding me? Freiburg, till this day, when I play with him, still does that call out. Like when he does something amazing when we're playing, he would himself scream like, Freiburg! So yeah, yeah. He's, yeah, he's absolutely going insane. But he deserves it. He deserves it. it like that tournament. To be fair. Yeah, peak, peak tournament for Adam. He always had that potential, and I think we were so hungry. For, after losing two major finals, I think everybody has needed that win so hard. Everybody has played out of their minds, Adam especially, but the whole team just stepped up big time. It's a good moment though, even as a, a competitor, I could still kind of feel like, yeah, you, you guys deserve it. This was definitely the last chance for that lineup to win a major. Yeah. <laughs> It's hard to put emotions on a big uh, victory like this, but I think yeah. everybody has exploded. Get right dropping to the floor, crying. So I think it speaks like for everybody in the NIP yeah. team that uh, that we did it. Fifern <laughs> wasn't around long after this win, I believe. So cementing the 87 and zero squad with a major victory out of uh, like one of the greatest highlights of my entire career. And I think, uh, I think for many of us in that squad, uh, always going to be one of the biggest, if not the biggest win ever. But the scene was not without controversy. With bigger tournaments and more money, came allegations of foul play and even cheating. So cheating, allegations, and I guess the man, man of the hour is 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 Flusher here. You know what? This guy, because of this guy, the Flusher, our IGL Neo can't sleep. Neo can't sleep because of this guy. Neo always think he he has something, always. Neo always analyze these matches versus this guy, always. Especially when we lost, Neo went crazy. I think at some point you, I was probably dragged into like the whole, like, okay, yeah, he's cheating, or like, and at some point, no, he's not cheating. He has war hard, I'm hard, everything, <laughs> and uh, poor I. And I always say, poor Neo, that's gonna be like a very bad night for my friend Neo, for I feel it. <laughs> 
Oh, finds the angle onto Olaf and the info on the other one. Surely not a 1v3 from Flusher. Ray. Oh! <laughs> See you later, man. We always have an obsession about cheaters. Obsession about everyone. But at the same time, you like don't think anybody can cheat when you know like what DreamHack did and everything they tried to do to like secure everybody that okay. I think we had the highest security out of yeah, uh, anyone in there was a one point like, of tournament yeah. of course Fusha some things aren't <laughs> that easily explainable in Counter Strike how you make reads there's uh, a lot of gut of... feeling in, yeah, in Counter Strike uh, sometimes you don't know you're gonna you're gonna just move your mouse, you're gonna move your keyboard, whatever, and because on the game, your cursor is gonna do like that, and maybe there is a skin behind the wall, but you don't know that you're gonna be a cheater. It's starting when the cockley, when the cockley is uh, killing me through the jump, on the circle on, especially on the land, in front of no, many thousands of people. That was like a quarter final. It was a very important round. I can't believe what I'm missing right here. Oh, no. okay. Get out of here. Get and that was the moment uh, everyone starting something is something is wrong. A few weeks later, there is like a information on the internet. Cookly get banned. I still yeah. think about this. I write to Cookly a lot of times. Cookly, you have something or no? Please tell me. You have something or no? And Cookly, I swear, Pasha, I I'm not cheating. I'm not cheating. To be honest, I don't know. To be honest, I don't know. From there, from that period, people can actually start thinking what people can cheat on a professional level, on a competitive level, in land. It impacted us, but we tried to kind of switch it into this us against them mentality where, you know, let's shut the crowd down. Yeah. Like, so we, you, we, we, we would take the you were silence feed, you were as feeding. Shares, Yeah, you were feeding you know. on the... Yeah. So the I buy power ban, man, we had heard, you know, the CSGO lounge betting was happening and people were realizing their matches were on it and they're like, dude, this match doesn't mean anything. We go into this, some, some other North American teams say something's happening, some match fix or someone got caught and we kind of heard someone without knowing the name. And then they said, I think it's Brax and all them. I think, I think they literally threw a match. Wait a sec, they threw? Like, we're like, dude, I think they throw, look at these clips. He's gonna have two right there. Can they line up for him? What is he doing? Why did he hesitate so much? Oh, he says he wanted a knife. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta say, the entries are looking a little weak for my right power along with the strats. I mean, they're just doing very basic things. I think they actually threw, like, is this for real? Like, why would they, like, how much money could they have made? Like, you're like wondering, is it, is, was this really worth? Like, they're for sure, because something bad's gonna happen. And then, of course, the news comes out, and boom, Valve bans them. Like, we were still figuring out our scene. Like, these are players that we for sure thought maybe we'd even play with again. And at this time, you're thinking, wait, like, Brax, who I liked as a player, Steel, Dazed, AZK, like, these are all really good players. Are they done? And then I kind of started to be like, oh, this is real. Tyler, of course, said, hey, I wasn't part of this. The other guys weren't denying it, and you're like, really? Man, uh, it was a bummer. Honestly, it just felt weird to even ask him about it. I think eventually I talked to Brax, and he's like, I didn't really even know what I was doing, but it, but you did it, so it was, yeah. Uh, I think at the time in North America, we were already struggling for practice. So not only did we lose like a really good practice partner, um, but like our rivalries, you know, rivalries push you to the next level. I mean, if I could turn back the clock and talk to the power guys, it's obvious. Like I, Okay, stay away. This is just, this is not worth it. So, I mean, what else could I say, really? Right. However, this wasn't the first time the CS:GO boat was rocked by drama. For that, we must look back to the time of the Olaf boost. Olaf, who's cheap?
Oh, Ay, yo lo puse. Perfect. I'm gonna remember it all my life, you know. Uh, so yeah, uh, the all of boost. Yeah, the sensitive topic for for many reasons. Gun shipping, are you ready? It's LDLC versus Fnatic. Make some noise. Awesome. Yeah, That's packed so house here for this match, and this could potentially Ollie. be a grand final match. So essentially, we we ended up playing LDLC in the semifinals. Uh, I remember uh, we did a really good city uh, side on overpass. It was the third map. The LDLC are coming into the second half ultra confident. I mean, they had a near flawless first half here versus Fnatic. They have a great lead, a great head start going in here. I think we lost was Pistol as yeah. well. Yeah, you did. Uh, Shots comes in with another one here, and it's oh. going to be a one on two. He just has to defend. It's a one headshot. He needs to pick up a second one, and he's going to get a double kill. LDLC, they win the round. So we, we were essentially in a no. really, really deep hole. <laughs> oh, the pressure is bouncing on the Fnatic side. And then we are up like to 13 for something like that. And we are like, okay, we knew we, we had the game uh, and we're gonna close it out. And then we had this, you know, boost, which we essentially wanted to save even further into the tournament. But this was a do or die moment. Do they have a weird boost going on currently? Yes, look at this oh, oh, oh my God. God, this is beautiful. He can look over oh. to the restrooms as well. But I must ask, like who, like, who came up with the boost? Like, where did you... So it was JW who came with it, I don't know, one and a half or two months earlier. So we never used it in practice. We never... We had only, oh, like, yeah. seen how it might play out. So you didn't, we like... never uh, you, used you never it. used So that was actually the first time yeah. you actually, like... So you didn't actually know how it played out? No. Patience came coming out. I can spot them coming out of squeak door as well. He's here. He sees them down there. Straight heads up. They have no idea. Smith's looking confused and dazed, and there's going to be a follow up. Shut up, You've got to be kidding me. Fnatic. They pick up the round. The boost works. And then we started to get killed. We don't really know how. Maybe we're missing some information. Make sure to communicate like wisely for your teammates and stuff like that. So that's fine. They still are not sure. They're just getting fired. And they're going down. All of my stuff. They have no idea. But after two or three rounds, we're like, he's still killing us. And we're trying to do some timeouts and to speak between us. Like, where is he? Oh man, what a situation. What an oh, absolutely fancy. crazy situation. I mean, did you see him? Did you see him? Did you see him? No, no, no. Like, what is going on? No, I think he's just jumping there. It is. <laughs> it is raining down death from above. <laughs> Cara, é duro aqui, né, velho? É, gu... é, é duro porque hoje, né, se a gente for parar pra pensar, quantos pezinhos, né, não tem aquele pezinho puliminha lá na, na Anciente e por aí vai, né, velho? Aqui é foda, velho. É free total, né, velho? Não tem o que fazer, velho. Até hoje, né? Ah, é roubado e tal, mas acho que assim... Velho, tem pezinho que é feito hoje, aquele pezinho na vertigo, tá ligado? Que o cara vai lá e dá pezinho e tal, é que a galera sabe, hoje o pessoal, eu acho que o, qual que é o lance aqui, velho? O lance não é só o pezinho, o lance foi eles terem conseguido guardar a informação, né? Então é muito difícil, velho. É muito difícil você falar, ah, pô, é antiético, não é, é free, não é, divide opiniões, velho. It's 13 to é difícil, 7. velho. I remember them looking so confused. Yes. <laughs> you can see. É I foda, see velho. Yeah. Like looking up in the... Ah, oh, look at this, now Happy getting Olá. boosted up, but he gets spotted, all my sees it coming. And all the crowd, like, next to us, were, like, starting, oh. like, just to, to, to jump or whatever, like, to look at us, to say, ah! Hey! What, what is going on? We don't understand, you know what I mean? Fnatic, they make their way to the semis of another major tournament. Then we just like lose the match and normally when you lose a match, you are frustrated, yeah. you are sad, you are angry, whatever, but you got emotions. And it's probably one of the only match of my world career that we didn't have emotions because we didn't understand. We didn't know what's going on. <laughs> I mean, uh, the map is called Olaf Pass for a reason. <laughs> Honestly, I, I don't know, I am genuinely speechless. It, it, it's made me so upset, but because it is complete. Do, do you Hola. think it's fair? 
Mas aí é que tá, velho. Vamos lá, velho. Isso também que é um negócio que eu falo até hoje, tá ligado, velho? É um negócio que eu falo... É, o CS, ele é um jogo da comunidade, ele é um jogo pra comunidade, mas ele existe uma competição, velho. E uma coisa que eu gostaria muito, 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 e a gente vai deixar de ser leiteiro quando isso resolver, tá ligado, velho? Vai por mim, velho, vai por mim. É quando você parar de jogar a responsabilidade no jogador, se você perguntar pro Maradona se o gol de mão é justo, a mão não é nem dele, a mão é de Deus, tá ligado? Que é um exemplo que eu tento passar pra vocês. Na competição, a mão vai ser de Deus. Quem tem que decidir isso é o juiz. Se tinha um juiz ali olhando, se tinha um árbitro ali olhando e deixou isso acontecer, acabou. Não tem o que fazer, tá ligado? Tá todo mundo vendo. Você bota um juiz ali, você bota alguém, você bota... Ah, é um papo de noia, é um papo de não sei o quê. Mas entendam isso, rapaziada. Você não pode deixar, vai por mim, numa competição, você nunca pode deixar pros competidores decidirem se aquilo é justo ou não enquanto aquilo acontece, velho. Você, por isso que você tem juiz, tá ligado? Por isso que numa competição você tem um bandeirinha, você tem um juiz, você tem um árbitro, você tem alguém que tá olhando aquilo pra não deixar que coisas que nem essa aconteça caso não seja justo, tá ligado? O cara tem que olhar e durante a partida ele virar e falar peraí, peraí, isso aqui não é pra acontecer, eu preciso parar isso daqui, porque essa luta não está certa, esse jogo não está certo, essa competição não está certa. A partir do momento que você, e eu juro pra você, velho, quem vai falar, Gal, eu discordo, Gal isso, Gal aquilo, rapaziada, no meio da competição existe sujeira, existe traição, existe falta de caráter, existe um milhão de coisas, velho. E não tem o que fazer, você precisa ter um juiz, tá ligado? A gente vive, e eu posso dar exemplos do futebol, que é o que a gente vive. Você vê um jogador cavar um pênalti e você pensa, olha lá que God conseguiu fazer uma jogada, o zagueiro nem acertou ele, você vai achar que é God, se for do seu time. Se não for do seu time, você vai ficar irritado com aquilo. O competidor, ele tá ali e ele vai tentar fazer. Nesse caso aqui, o cara ele nem consegue entender no momento que ele tá fazendo se ele tá fazendo algo certo ou não, porque ele nem usou, entendeu? Então, a partir do momento que você tá ali, você tá jogando, você tá usando um pezinho, tem um juiz atrás de você olhando e ele não fala pra você parar de fazer isso, ele não pede um pause, ele não tenta parar aquilo, na sua cabeça de competidor, o jogo segue, porque você quer ganhar, tá ligado? Como que esse cara, você quer, vocês realmente vivem num planeta onde o competidor, no meio dessa situação, ele vai falar e parar. Não, peraí, peraí, os caras não estão entendendo de onde tá vindo o tiro, vamos explicar pra eles? Pô, pelo amor de Deus, rapaziada, tá ligado? Não tem como, não tem, você nunca deve ter competido em absolutamente nada, tá ligado? Você vive num, 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 num porra, sei lá, tá ligado? Você não vive, você, não, você nunca competiu em nada, porque alguém vai estar tá fazendo isso. Ah, Gal, é ético, é moral, é justo, é não sei o quê, é da competição, velho. E a única pessoa que pode resolver isso é o juiz. Um dia, em algum momento, o juiz vai tomar a decisão e alguém vai virar e falar assim, pô, velho, é o juiz que decide isso, né? Olha lá. Nem mostrou a resposta, porque não é ele, velho. Não é ele. É o juiz. In the arena, the fans were sharing, right? So we... Hmm. We're super excited. I was screaming after every kill, I think. I was super excited and uh, I was like, yeah, then we won, right? I was super happy. And then, <laughs> yeah, I was watching Twitter and that was just a weird vibe, like... After the match, uh, then of course we went towards the admin because we are like, like he's seeing like 70% of the map. How is it legit? I remember being you know, obviously sad, uh, watching at uh, the reactions. It was so weird as a spectator as well. I remember actually tweeting, I, I said, I, I wrote like, this isn't Counter-Strike at all. Yeah. 
but it's, it was all this circumstance because we're recently cheating accused of flasha yeah. uh, i remember even walking into the hotel some players would yell at us scream at us uh, so we couldn't really talk to anyone it was like everyone we were isolated us. yeah we were isolated from the yeah competitive scene at that point mm. yeah people were not liking us the community did not like us all the pro players everyone that that for me was very hard um, I was close to stop playing professionally. I, I didn't want to do anything else. This is not worth it, you know? Weird vibe and very like depressing times. I just remember I wanted to leave. I wanted to get out of there. I think a lot of players, myself included, is like a little bit like regretful probably how it all turned out. Even if in my opinion it was not legit to do something like that, uh, I can't say that it was also something uh, good uh, with all people going harsh at them or whatever. The bashing on their side like were too heavy, really too heavy and I think it was really hard for them. Uh, not the best memories after that win but because uh, uh, at the end of the day we, we decided to to drop out of the, of the yeah. tournament. Fnatic has forfeit the match between uh, against LDLC. Okay. So this is final and LDLC is through, they're gonna face off. So we essentially decided Olha aí, ó. Tá vendo? E aqui mostra, né? É o. Não sei se é o admin do campeonato e tal. E aí, né? Não, mano, para pra se. Para pra. Mano, eu sei que vocês conseguem entender, tá ligado, velho? Eu sei que vocês conseguem entender. Vocês não são tão burros assim. E eu peço desculpa se vocês forem, tá ligado, velho? Eu já peço desculpa antecipadamente, velho. Vamos lá, de novo. O Counter Strike, o Counter Strike, ele é um jogo da comunidade, para a comunidade. Existem várias coisas dentro da comunidade que fazem esse jogo ser incrível, né? O time, você pode ter o cara que vai tomar um cartão, né? Que vai tomar uma entrada, não vai ser uma falta ali, não pegou no pé dele. De repente, o juiz expulsou o adversário e esse cara vai virar para o juiz e falar assim, ó... Oh, Tira o cartão vermelho desse cara, não foi falta, ou não foi pênalti, e por aí vai, né? Agora, essa situação aqui, o juiz e o admin deixou para o time resolver isso, né? O time tomou a decisão correta? Se o time sentiu que ele fez algo que prejudicou a integridade do campeonato, do que eles acreditam e tudo mais, e eles desistiram do campeonato, tá tudo certo. Isso é God, né? Isso é God. Agora, se você deixar essa decisão pro time e pro jogador, isso é coisa de leiteiro, tá ligado? É isso que vocês precisam entender. É só isso. Que você deixar esta decisão pro jogador do que é certo ou não, isso é a parada de leiteiro. Porque você joga uma responsabilidade e você transfere uma coisa que não deveria ser do jogador para ele tá ligado? Pô, o que vocês que acham disso? Pô, você achou justo? Pô, você achou correto? Nossa, você não vai desistir? Você tá passando uma responsabilidade que é do juiz, que é do admin, pro jogador. Isso é leiteiragem, tá ligado? É só isso. A decisão que os jogadores tiveram de desistir do campeonato só cabe a eles. Agora, eles são God por isso? São. Você pode cobrar que todo mundo vai ser assim? Até pode. Na sua vida vai ser? Eu sinto te dizer que não, tá ligado, velho? Na competição empresarial, corporativa, de vida, competição esportiva, você ainda vai perceber e vai demorar um tempo para perceber que normalmente não é assim. E tá tudo bem, né? There's no, there's no point in, That's actually true. in doing it. Can that, no, it was like you had to isolate for a while from, from social media. No. I mean, Foi uma loucura. I don't think that boost was oh. that overpowered, and I've said this many times before. If it happened again, I would do the same. Olá. Like now, even more so, and I would fight the decision. <laughs> like I don't know, I'm, I'm a different person now, but uh, yeah. In the end, it kind of helped because after that, I think I became a better player, and we as a team became uh, a better team as well because we were like, okay, fuck it. It's we against everyone else. Let's just do this together. And we, we started winning and we won a lot. Your ESL World Cup Champions are fantastic! 
eles, eles cederam uma pressão, velho, que nem era deles, tá ligado? A pressão tinha que ser do juiz, da arbitragem, tinha que ser do... Eu estava pensando em uma forma para organizar essa burrice que estava acontecendo, like, let's just not put that chance in the trash. If we win against Fnatic, like that, we win the event, no matter what. Round of applause for LDLC. Oh, they are going to put out there. That win, like, you will remember it for, for a lifetime. And I was also playing with Smith, who is my best friend. Uh, and, uh, you know, when the first match came out, we were like, okay, let's do a promise that we're gonna win our first major together. And we did what we were actually like dreaming of when we were younger. And I'm really happy to have been lucky with him and with my former teammates uh, back then. Poder da amizade, né, velho? O Shox é God, velho. Esse time é LDLC até hoje, assim, né? Uma tag God, velho. And with the controversy behind us, a new scene began rising. Eita! Born F. Out of South America. Nossa! Aqui acabou. Nossa! Caramba, professor, tomou um tiro na perna, professor. Nossa, quem viu? O professor foi baleado. Olha lá, o professor foi baleado na perna, velho. Caramba, já chegou de calça rasgada, velho. F total, velho. Caramba, já chegou com. Aqui na perna dá uns 20, 20, né? Já tira uns 20, já chegou com 78 de HP, né? Nossa, olha lá. So many years playing, so many nice moments. Major trophy, a lot of friends, some rivals. Very cool. Yeah, in English, that's cool. Uh, when CSGO came out, uh, personally, I had just joined university. I was studying uh, electrical engineering for two weeks, and then CSGO came out. And for me, it was like, what the hell do I do now? Do I, do I keep studying? Do I finish this university? Or do I really go all in again on gaming? Because I had done that before. It was in 2009 when I got the invitation to play with the best Brazilian players at the nice. time. And I, I really went all in during that time. But it was a tough time for CS overall because I think it was at the very end of PS 1.6 and oh, things were not I looking that good camera. anymore. So yeah, uh, I had some thoughts and I decided I had to go all-in again. I had to keep going. And then 2014, we decided to go to our first CSGO tournament. Uh, it happened in France. And on that specific month, we decided to use all the gatherings, all the money we received from the students on Games Academy. This is Fallen. I'm here to talk today about CTO Mirage. And we actually told the community, hey, we're going to be using the money to go to that tournament. So the subscriptions doubled. And we went from like 200 students monthly to 400 at that time. And then we played our first tournament there. I think we won a match and lost all of the others, or maybe we lost all the matches. And it was, it was quite funny because even Pasha here, I remember in Fur, he was like on the tournament, he, I'm going to take a photo with this guy. I might not have ever seen him again, you know? And then that's when we went for our first international tournament. We play MLG Aspen. And that's when we really showcased ourselves to the world for the first time, because we beat Cloud9. Jordan and his team was doing super good at the time. Then here comes the Brazilians coming from nowhere. Nobody ever heard of them. And then we played an amazing match against Deno Mirage. We were playing uh, with a couple new strategies that no one had ever seen it. We were literally throwing five smokes at the same time on waste side to make sure that they uh, don't take any losses once these grenades come in. And there you go. You see Cloudline moving in a little bit. You know what's going on. We had all planned out where we're going to plant the bomb, which kills are going to come, how they would freak out when they see all the smoke. And then people are like, oh my god, like we, we got to get this game global. Just like that, Cloud9 get obliterated against the Brazilians. Kaboom, I don't think anyone saw that coming. And Cloud9 looks stunned. They look speechless. And watch out, world. Brazil's got a contender. 
having the Brazilians as a rival were interesting because they moved to USA, so now we had a new practice partner, and these guys were like, "Well, these guys could, these guys could shoot." Yeah, so we, we first went to US, and we went together to some stores, buy the first tables, get the first chairs. You know, we were deciding who is going to sleep with who because we didn't mm. have enough uh, rooms for everyone. But, you know, there was just this feeling that what really mattered to us was playing some CS. And that's when we received the first um, invite to play uh, qualification process in Katowice for the major. During that trip, we didn't have enough money to do all the things we wanted. And that's when uh, Flusher had just won, I think, a Pantamera tournament in Sweden. And he he decided to donate his winnings to our cause. Hey Flusha, we're just coming out here in Denver and realized that you made a donation for us of 4K wheels. And because of you, we are ready to go there. Thank you so much, man. <laughs> With a lot of help from himself and other players and other orgs like ESA and Brazilian community, we're able to go to Poland and qualify for the first major. And you can imagine the pressure, right? Because not only really wanted to, to go through and do well, but a lot of you have helped us financially and emotionally and everyone supporting us. And when we went to the last match, we were playing the Danish guys. And so I just remember the feeling of finishing that match and recognizing how important that win was. Fallen picks it up and Kaboom advance another step closer to the major. Couple changes here, couple changes there, and we are able to get this guy in the team. Eventually, Ziki K uh, was removed and Code Zero was added. And since day one, he already showcased something different. We would go play practice, and he was just a headshot machine. You could see it on the first days. Even the practice were playing. I remember even Kerrigan saying something like, Where the hell did you find this guy? You know, he was like dropping 30 bombs every single practice. And from day one, he was very different. He had a lot of um, dedication. He was the first one on the server, last one off. Very smart, very open-minded to the ideas the team wanted to play. At certain point, we felt that something was needed. We decided to pick up Taco, FNX, and Zeus, the coach, and make a big replacement to the team. And that was just the beginning for us. That's where all the magic happened. Ladies and gentlemen, let's make some noise here. Light the building up. Yeah, MLG Columbus, I remember at the time as well, they had just doubled up the price pool. You went from $250,000 to $500,000, so which were like, whoa, if it happens for us to win, that's gonna be the biggest ever. There you have it, folks. And again, I don't think you can nod enough to Fallen. Not only what he has done with this team, what he does with any of his players around him, and what he has done for the Brazilian scene. They've already, in, in the space of a few months, elevate themselves. They're already an elite team. They're making finals. They're coming close to winning. The key thing is they've never won a big tournament before. And they've certainly never been this deep in a major before. So the obvious narrative is like, oh, is it their time yet? And we played this tournament super well. Uh, one of the deciding matches happened on Mirage again. And this time we had nice. this guy, 59. Hello, Kinsiano, yeah, he yeah. has the graffiti game now on, on Venn, on B-side Mirage. Here he comes once again, the first base is a trend, he's gonna hit the ground there, it's Cole. Oh, what a jumping double from Cole! What is there going on right now? How does he do this? He made some magic happen and they were like, what the hell, what, what just happened? And he was like, I can't even explain what happened, guys, let's just win this thing out. From that moment on, we kept going and we came back into this match. There even a, a, a taco on the second map on cash. Sure, he wrongly or I think he missed bought uh, the auto sniper, and he was getting so many kills with him. I think he even bought it again afterwards. Big play from Fur, and now Taco's in there with an auto sniper, two it. frags. He's going to get the last one as well. Some of those things that decides that you don't really account for, but when it's your time to win, when it's fate, it, it just really happened. And then later on, we played finals against Navi. And we won first map on, on Mirage. Picking it up and Luminosity winning on Mirage. And then from that moment, the confidence was over the roof. We just wanted to win this trophy so much that nothing was stopping us. Now it's a one on one Guardian versus Taco. It may just be destined to be. And it's Luminosity winning their first major championship. So, yeah, this team was quite special. Quite special.
selfless player, Taco, playing for the team, uh, doing his anchor role. Everything wanted to have a Taco at the time. We had Code Zero, um, best player in the world for two years in a row, insane rifler. We had Fur, the most aggressive player, and I would say a meta changing game style, you know, like he, so many people learn from him. And we had FNX, surviving from the ashes, clutching a lot. And FNX is the kind of player who you just see that he was born for the game. Going through my mind, that was like, oh, everything really was worth it, you know. I have been playing since 2003. I won that in 2016, so 13 years of uh, grinding, you know. A lot of time looking for a moment like that. I know that you've yes. sacrificed an awful lot. You've moved home, you've left family at home, you've had no money, you've put money into the scene, you've helped the Brazilian Counter-Strike scene, so much. Can you sum up to me just what this means to the country of Brazil and your teammates? Uh, just to sum it up, this is our dream coming true. And I don't know, just thanks. It's our dream to play Counter-Strike competitively and winning the biggest tournament ever on CSGO means so much to me personally and I'm sure it means a lot to my teammates as well. One by one, the great leaders of Counter-Strike began to get their moments of glory. From Fallen, to the legendary Ukrainian captain, How is Zeus. I just say, all of my staff, I love you. And second, God help me and I won measure. But despite all of this, the scene still yearned for a major win out of North America. Loucura aí, ó, 2018 já, que loucura, né? So going into Esse probably mesmo. my best CS:GO roster yet, which was myself, Shroud, Stewie, Automatic, Skadoodle. Foi o primeiro major que eu we transmiti aí. For sure, but really we hadn't done what we wanted this whole time. We hadn't won a major. You know, I think at that point, something needed to happen to our team, myself and Shroud, out for Tarek and Rush. And honestly, it looked all the same. Everything looked the same until um, E-League Major Boston. We're gonna have FaZe versus Cloud9. So much history, and it's all about this trophy. Essa final yeah, the era muito do phase, Major, uh, the final, uh, the show. Yeah, it's a hard one. Yes. I mean, uh, we played uh, super good going into that tournament. We were super confident. And during the tournament, we just became better and better and better. Base clan, this is meant to be their major. They've been the favorites for like coming in, one of the most expensive rosters. Yeah, if they don't win this, this oh, is a missing oh, ring. Phase, ring. not only was their team top to bottom skilled, Olaf was probably considered the previous couple of years one of the best players in the world, came back as like, not even their star player at that point, and he was still such a beast. And you got Nico, who's arguably the best rifler of all time in CSGO. Kerrigan, who's arguably one of the best strat callers. Rain, who's one of the most solid Don't land connect. players. Every shot he needs to hit, he's gonna hit. Yeah, that, no, and then Guardian, that who was, guard, he was one of those operas, who you felt his presence always. And uh, well, then the in the though. final, right, we play Cloud9 which was a very big surprise. They went down zero <laughs> 2 in the group stage. Boom, you go into <clears throat> major groups, 0-2. Oh You're 0-2, oh dead team walk-in starts to rise, the zombies start to stand up, there's like resentment building in the team, people aren't very happy. Behind the scenes, there was a lot of rumors going around that Cloud9, the team was finished, like they were done. They didn't want to play with each other. And they flipped a switch, and that switch was, now they're 1-2, and two. now they're 2-2. Two and two. Now they're three and two, they're out of groups, and now all of a sudden something's cooking here. Now Cloud9, on the other hand, an unbelievable difficult run that they faced. It was an uphill battle. They had to beat all of the top teams above them to get there. We were kind of happy to play Cloud9 in the final, and we we're like, oh, yeah, okay, now we got a very big opportunity, yeah, right? Yeah, it's a perigo, yeah, the yeah. final, we win the first map, and then we lose the second map. 
and then we play the third ah, match. Inferno, Inferno, 15 a 10. And, uh, yeah, I think every, everybody knows how uh, that went. I, mm. To this day, I still haven't looked at that game. I haven't looked at that one. Uh, I can't do it. You've never watched it back? No. Uh, I have a very hard time doing so. Uh, I watched the Mirage game. That's the only one. I watched the one we won. And I, I'm like, I'm not watching more, man. I don't really see the point because I know that I'm just going to get pissed off. I'm just going to get angry. I'm just going to get tilted. All right, let's watch this shit again. Uh. You know, um, we're here on NA soil. You got Stu coming on Tarek's shoulders. I think the boys were just, first of all, like the fact that they were there at all after being on two was probably going through their heads. And then I think just in general, they knew they needed to get this crowd going. Like any advantage you can get. Yeah, it was a super big moment for Americans. Not only the first time in a major final, I think it is for the Americans, or second time, but also being on, a, on home soil. Nobody expected it. Boston makes a noise in this bitch! They start the press and the pistol bullets are all over the place, but it's going to be FaZe who get the defuse. I think the, the whole game was very close, and then on the T side, when we switched over, we played super good in the start. I don't know, I felt super confident during the whole final, during the whole major. I had a feeling that we were going to win. Match point FaZe, they are on the cusp of winning this major. And after that, I think oh, yeah, we all started to believe yeah. maybe a little bit that we had already won. And you said Cloud9, if they wanted to do it, they'd have to do it the hard way. But at the same time, this makes me feel a little bit better because I thought it was 59, but 15 11. But we should, yeah, we should. I thought it was 15 10. He thought it was 15 9. I thought it was 15 10. In fact, it was 15 11. Look at that crazy. It was only four match points, you know? Você vê? Uma loucura, velho. Mas todo mundo sabe o que aconteceu. É muito louco pensar que o Nico não foi campeão de Major jogando com esse time, né, velho? Cara, é muito... Não é pra acontecer. É o James Harden, né, do, do, do CS, velho. Olof Meister, Rain, Kerrigan, Guardian e Nico, cara. Que loucura, né, velho? Pra jogar contra a Cloud Bagres, né? Nossa. Uh... Tarek! Tyler gets big op kills, big clutches, big b holds. Like they definitely needed to show up. It wasn't easy. In the most pivotal moment, it has to be Carrigan. It has to be the leader. But it's Rush all the way, and Tyler again, again they stay alive. But then um, still we started playing off in pool on banana like every round and uh, we had a very hard time adapting to that being pulled automatic coming off his position the smoke the flashes automatic flights Stewie needs to land some shots and he is two kills for him there was a couple of moments where it looked bleak and then all of a sudden he, boom goes down he must stay alive Stewie is going absolutely crazy on the b-bomb site there's no time to fly the bomb it's too late the money's not there one more round what's a lot of noise the heart starts pumping 10 times faster because you just want to end it. The final buy and the final round. And this was a lot of pressure because we felt that we should win this major. And there was a lot of people that really wanted to win a major. Guardian has been in a major final like four times yes. and this was his fourth one. And we are 15-14 and it kind of feels like this is the only chance we have. Take a breather here and recompose for the final round of regulation. I think they like fake day and they were falling back B last second. Base plan trying to force the CTs back on A. It's one minute left. I think we have a little bit hard time to decide what we want to do. I make a stupid play. What of my slow has been taken out towards the B bomb site. It's about the pressure it gets to you, man. And I think FaZe like, might have got a kill, but there's like 12 seconds. They are one B three on B now. If Stewie just gets run over, they'd probably get bombed down. Stewie's on his own, but look at the time! And this, this by Stewie, man. Look at the time, there's seven seconds to got the bomb! Boom, time's wearing down. You can hear Bar Elf's voice right now. They're trying to go through it, but it's no more time! Boom, Stewie's on the round! We're going to overtime! Cloud9 have done it! How have they done that? They came back all the way! He hits every shot. If he misses one of those and they get the refrag, we win the major. So that feels hard to see, yeah. It's hard to watch, man. It is. It's first time seeing this, so... Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. It's 
secured the overtime, which was still not a done deal, but uh, what an epic feat in that arena. And that's when the crowd started losing their minds, saying, I think, I think we can close this. Let's do it here. They give themselves another chance, and you have to wonder. These personalities, I feel like both Tyrek and Stuve especially, they kind of become better when the crowd is on their side. They can feed of it, you know, right? And they didn't give up, and you have to give it to them. NAs wanted this major so bad that I think right when they hit that overtime round, it was like it was like a release, collective release of the audience, like losing their mind. I mean, for us, it was hard to reset mentally, right? Because you feel like you kind of have already won the major when you're at 15, 11, T side. And then you're on overtime, you're like, shit, we had four tries. Cloud9's defense is looking very strong indeed. Press back at it again from the pit position. And it doesn't seem like there's a way to stop Cloud9 now. Sad, that is hard watching because it's so like small stuff that could have changed a lot of rounds. And that's... Uh, it's Guardian. He's the only man standing between Cloud9 and the Major. It's going to be a double peak. Then the first one. Oh! We go to overtime number two. Guardian did clutch a lot in this tournament, so you felt like it was still a possibility. You're hoping, right? Can he do it again? He's been in his position before to win phase around a very important, very crucial one. Can he deny Cloud9? He's going to close this 1v2. This is what he does. We saw it from this position before. He cannot miss a single shot. You could hear them saying, send them home. Guardian waits. Send their home. Patiently. Send their home. It sucks wanting Send their your home. to clutch, but this, I don't know. As Cloud9 sets the push up. Oh! Oh, this happens! And they peaked him and he missed a shot. I was like, dude, that, that was it right there. Cloud9 are your any major champions! Que é louco, like... né? Aqui, velho, tem a, é, é uma pausa, mas é muito louco, né? Você parar pra pensar, tipo assim, é um rolê sinistro, velho. O Olof, ele é uma, pô, uma lenda, né? Duas vezes campeão do Major, beleza, né? Ganhou em 2015, né? Acho que foi os dois Major ali, né? Foi isso, não foi? Um deles, ele foi MVP e tudo mais ali com o Fnatic. Foi isso, né? Um deles, ele foi MVP, o outro não, né? E mesmo assim, machuca e tudo mais. Mas é muito louco, velho. Para para pensar. Eu acho que ele foi, ele foi três, duas vezes campeão de Major, né? Teve outros títulos e tudo mais. Foi muitos títulos. Mas, é, ele, ele chega nesse Major com o pessoal da FaZe. Ele tem esse time. Ele joga essa final. Ele perde essa final. E ele nunca mais assiste esse mapa, tá ligado, velho? É uma loucura, rapaziada. Você parar para pensar isso daí, tá ligado? Você parar pra pensar que o cara assim, velho, você foi lá, você competiu, você jogou, você teve erros, né? Ah, são traumas, assistiu agora e tudo mais. Mas assim, a gente tá falando de 2018, né? De lá pra cá, ele nunca mais ganhou um Major, né? Ele ganhou em 2015, ganhou outros campeonatos foda, mas velho, você precisa, eu não tô querendo ensinar nada aqui, né? Mas eu tô só fazendo uma reflexão, velho. Você precisa, velho, você, essa chance, né, velho, essa, essa parada, e pra vocês entenderem um pouco da mente do competidor, tá ligado, velho? O competidor, às vezes, ele não quer reviver aquilo, às vezes ele não quer se traumatizar de novo, mas, velho, faz parte do processo, velho. Você precisa enfrenta, enfrentar os seus fantasmas, velho. Você chega numa final você não reassiste o erro que você cometeu, eu não sei, pode ser que aquilo funcione, pode ser que aquilo não funcione, mas faz parte, velho, você precisa assistir, você precisa enfrentar aquilo, é muito difícil, eu não tô falando que eu no lugar dele conseguiria ter feito, não, jogando então, pô, principalmente, são outras realidades, né, a minha realidade é muito diferente da realidade que a galera viveu, da, 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 das chances, das oportunidades, eu não tô nem usando isso como, né, eu tô só uma reflexão aqui, eu jamais imaginaria que o Olof nunca mais tinha assistido o mapa, velho, nunca, nunca, velho, nunca imaginaria, velho, porque você, e, e outra coisa que vocês, né, falam, você vê um cara que já tinha ganhado duas vezes um Major, um cara que, né, mente formada, chega no palco, velho, chega no campeonato, chega na final, a pressão bate, velho, 
é uma coisa muito intensa, velho, que é o negócio que eu tava falando das Olimpíadas. Você pode ser o melhor competidor. Quando chega na prova final e aquilo tá valendo, tem uma áurea do esporte, velho. E quem é competidor e chega nesse lugar, velho, é uma parada, velho, que você, mano, você sacrifica a sua vida, você sacrifica seus amigos, você sacrifica a sua saúde, você sacrifica a sua família pra viver esse momento, velho. Essa aura gigantesca que passa durante uma final, durante um... Mano, é muito louco isso, velho. É insano. É insano, velho. Você... É, é uma loucura, velho. É uma loucura, tá ligado? Você troca tudo isso que eu tô falando, né? Todas as certezas e as incertezas e as segurança e as segura... inseguranças por um ano, por um momento que dura, velho. Minutos, velho. É muito louco, velho. Like, honestly, watching on my phone, é muito louco. When they're in the playoffs, a ponto do wow, cara nunca mais querer ver a What's partida, velho. I'm like, dude, I got the win major. And then all of a sudden, I'm checking my phone. This map, that map. Third map. They, oh, they lost. Oh my gosh, I didn't lose. It's overtime. Oh, oh my. And like watching it, and I was like, dude, they just won the major. You're shocked. You don't know what to say. You don't know what to do. And you don't understand what just happened because... Like 10 minutes ago, you were up 15-11. You were gonna win a major, but you end up losing in double overtime. Yeah, that was, uh, it's a tough one, and it's the hardest loss that I ever had in my career, and one of my hardest days in my entire life. Oh, dude, I can't imagine uh, for Olaf, Nico, all those boys on phase. I mean, one, to just feel like you're just such a better team, top to bottom, and then two, actually be at match point and let the map slip out of your hands like that. Yeah, yeah that's, that's one that they didn't sleep well for a couple of nights at least after that. To this day, I mean, uh, people talk about that upset and Nico should have won. That could have changed his whole career and, and trajectory. Uh, These are the moments that you remember more than the wins. Like the wins, you kind of get over them pretty fast, but the losses, they still haunt you to this day, you know? Champions. NACS definitely fell back after we won that, yeah, and it, 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 it did. And for the fans now, we had something to hold on to, and then as players, now you knew that everything was going to be taken more seriously. Today, you have made history. You are the E-League Major Champion. Uh, thank you, thank you. Um, I don't really have much words to say, as you know. <laughs> I'm not crying, you're crying, stop. <laughs> uh... It's just so epic to have Skadoodle do that interview because that's not him. Like, he was always in the background, and to have, I'm not crying, you're crying, you know? Um, but I understand to pass that barrier and to overcome that is kind of what they were all playing for. Ah, yes. Finally, Só with a North abaixo. American major win, Agora the scene é rejoiced. Robô. É um robô, And boy, robô. did we ever have fun in doing so. Where did all the memes come from? You are not my friend, you are my brother, my friend. You are not my friend, you are my brother, my friend. I definitely think North America had the most, like, content, you know, like, Mo, uh, you know, the chicken coop scene. Please, please, chicken coop. Chicken coop! I could hear his voice from a picture. I don't know how often you could say that. Tarek eating cereal, getting aces. Freakazoid, our whole team, you know, tank top nine. Um. I always the guy like a memes coming uh, to Papito to me. The school like, esports, they have an application uh, where you can basically catch up on all of the esports. People are very shy in Poland because they think about me bad, I am stupid, I don't know English, and I don't care. When someone asks me, Pasha, go to interview, I go for interview. And hello, my friends, here is talking Pasha Biceps from Virtus Pro. Hello, good morning. Good morning, my friends. People would recognize me in 2009, but not to the same extent we happened in 16 and 17. I think I became the most followed uh, pro player in CS. I was able to be uh, presented in a shampoo, for example, for kids like Cristiano Ronaldo, you know? <laughs> which, which one you want? People are like in Brazil saying, do you want the Cristiano Ronaldo face or falling face? Of course, I'll take the falling one. GG! Oh man, 
already know here, the flashbang dance. This is a simple one. I can only do a little one behind the chair here. But the flashbang dance, it started as the character in CSGO when they got blind, their arm goes in front and you have the gun out. It was kind of goofy. And then like we beat Dignitas on stage at Cologne and I just flashbang dance on him like right before the handshake on the stage. And then it just like, it just started rolling where people are like flashbang dance. And like, that was, that was the thing that I created all the way to this point where now we have a song in the game called the flashbang dance, so. We saw that Neymar was playing and then he wanted to, to start investing into a team. Like he even thought about buying us for one skate from what I heard. Quite frankly, he, he's, he's good. He's smart, like he knows some tricks. He knows what to clutch. <laughs> I see her off and I go to matchmaking and there was the guy who, you know, act bad and I say to him, you are not my friend. You are not my friend. And uh, he was, you know, he feel bad and I say, you are not my friend. You are my brother, my friend. You are my <laughs> brother, my friend. I went to Russia and boom, the guy had a fallen face with a full bird on his arm. And I'm like, what the heck? Like, you, what, what, do, what do I mean to you for you to put my full face on your bicep? I always say, my friend, my friend, my friend. I like it. I'm proud of this because it's very good, good sentence. It's very good sentence. But amongst all of that fun, Little did the sea know that a new king was emerging from the icy winds of the north. Okay, so Peter, a lot of people say that uh, this is where the action happens. This is not the bedroom. I'm not talking about the bedroom, but uh, <laughs> I know that there should be some trophies in here. There's a little bit of trophies in here. And I'm curious to see which ones you can show me. There's a few. I mean, you mentioned... I have this one. It's not, not as pretty, but it's an MVP, at least from Blast. It's <laughs> like... Uh, quality has up and to yes. Yes, it has. But MVP, huh? Yeah, yeah, I got nice. a little bit. This is like one of the oldest tro like trophies that I have, like from the stack. It's called Steel Series, this goal league. It was like a Danish small championship. You, you also know it's small when it says, congratulations for you are a nice placement in the Steel Series league. Mm -hmm. Thank you for participating. And keeping the esports <laughs> going. Yeah, that's a, keeping it alive. Yeah, that's true. Uh, we had the Katowice one here. Nice. And there's like uh, ECS. It's Medan, yeah. Is that one in uh, London? Yeah, I think so. And this one as well from. I mean, careful, you might drop on your oh, toes. Yeah. My hair. You can just give me all of them. I'm going to present for one day that I'm Dupree. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> <laughs> and then of course oh, that, this is a insane life you know yeah can i have the gold bar too damn son i brought you some tea casper lovely you told me i could give you the best one in the house so i brought you the mango one you gave me yours i think i know i did there's a lot of pictures here and i can definitely tell that this is like a really great combination of everything that csgo has brought to us this is, I think, the first iteration of Astralis. Yeah. And probably the first organization that was owned just by players. Yeah, like the first player-owned organization. We wanted to have, like, we had wanted to have a voice within mm. the team. And I think that was one of the main reasons why we wanted to create it. Um, also because we wanted to create something Danish. I think that was also one of the things that was that, that stood out for us. But that was also like the, maybe the kickstart of the choking thing that we also had in Astralis. I think that yeah. came later in Astralis. Um, we won a couple of tournaments in TSM. But there was without a doubt that we had issues dealing with the pressure and dealing with the expectations that, that came along with the whole what winning process. So um, and I think uh, this is like me, I don't know how many people actually know her, but she was the first one that we picked up in Astralis to help us like, get, like, solve these problems, you know, yes. like, try to make us see ourselves as athletes in a different way. And she was also one of the forces for us winning our first major, I believe. It's Team Astralis, like an organization, I always remember them like a very professional team. Like a players, then staff before the final. When I saw like a, the psycholog, and we said, what the hell is going on? They got psycholog in the team, the girl. And everyone, you know, they are one step ahead of us. 
with psycholo guys. Actually, prior to this this major win, um, I was like given a warning from from Sonic at that time because I had I had my uh, my struggles in my personal life that I that I couldn't figure out and it didn't. It, yeah, it just made me a bad teammate, I guess, and mm. I couldn't find the focus. So he actually told me maybe three months before the, the major that, uh, you know, you need to, like, get your shit together. Otherwise, you know, we might eventually have to look for someone else. And obviously, the further we got into tournaments, I feel like we started playing better. And then all of a sudden, we found ourselves in the grand final against Virtus Pro. You know, like, the Poles at that time, they were, like, really experienced. And I remember going up against him in the final. was like, okay, this is, like, a little bit of, like, the final boss, you know? Yes. We've got an amazing story going into this final. Duncan, just give me some thoughts. For me, Astralis, I mean, win or lose, they're the best team in the world. You look at their record, three finals in a row, but they're facing the legends, you know? This is a team where they've had the same lineup since they won that last major, which was in early 2014. So you know this is a legendary team. And they kind of play that final boss role in this era. We never found ourselves in a grand final of the of a major before. Yeah, that's what we all want to achieve, but winning one is also what what you're fighting for as a Counter Strike player. Yes. Maybe you want to talk us through the third map train because you were behind quite a lot. Yeah, right? yeah, we were. So, can you remember anything from this comeback? Like, I think I remember everything. Yeah. <laughs> it would require nothing short of a miracle for Australis to bring this game back. We lead in the last map, like if 13 to six, I guess. 13 to six. It's almost three rounds to, to get like a second major. I already think about, you know, like uh, my achievement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. About, you know, like a money, we can bring the Poland, I can, you know, do something, I can invest something. You're telling me on the CT side when you were trailing behind yeah. quite a lot, yeah. there was no point where you were like, this is getting away from us, we're not yeah, winning. Yeah, a little bit, of course there is. I mean, I think you always have a little bit of doubt, but I think it's about like not let the doubt take over. Like you always need to keep fighting for everything mm -hmm. around, and I think that's what we did. Zebix, but Zebix, he's playing this magnificently. And there's the clutch. Point blank with the Tech 9. And the further we got into the game, like, the closer we got to the end. One kill after another. Astralis have now found their way to 10 rounds. And then we got the 14, 15 round. Pashu and Taz are left into two on four. Astralis, they're bringing it back. To go for that kind of play, to throw it all on one round, a rush onto A. VP definitely did not expect that. That the last call, the glaive, I think that's like one of the most iconic things in my career is that the glaive was like, guys, we're just gonna rush outside, just do the rush again. And everyone's like, yeah, yeah, yeah let's do it. Everyone felt that, okay, this is gonna work no matter what. Are they going to win their first major, the first time they're in the finals? And their first title, we'll find out, because the action's on, and Gabby opens it up, takes down Bialy already! The bomb has been picked up by Dupree, they get the spray, Neil takes one, and turns it there, and Astronaut, they win the first major championship, 16-14! Like I said, like, uh... Like Katowice was my favorite tournament. A major Atlanta was the you know, most heartbreaking moment in my career. After the finals, we asked Astralis, guys, what you doing? What the tactics? How you won, how you won versus us? This is impossible. And you know what they said? They said, guys, on the arena, on the crowd, was so loud, very loud. We don't hear nothing. And we just say, go Russia. And that's it. You can imagine? Nothing special, nothing special. Just rush, just press the W forward and go, in, you know, to the map. This is what you know, I don't know what to say. I ended up getting the last kill as well and all this, you know, the, the feelings of getting a warning and being, oh, there's a chance I might get replaced and everything, you know, I had all that taken away from me. Three days, I don't know how we, how we lost, really. 13-6, three rounds, three rounds, it's so close. 13 a 6 de CT na trem, velho. 13 a 6 de CT na trem, velho. When I started playing, I don't think I expected me to win a major. I don't think anyone does that in some sense. Like, you want to Podia achieve and win a major, tudo, but né? actually getting there is kind of crazy. So this is the, the relief photo, right? With the confetti and your tongue is out and... Yeah, yeah. I, like, oh. Yeah, I remember when we won that round, everyone just jumped up and threw the headsets off and Danny started crying and I started crying and I was sitting on the floor crying. and Probably the, the case of the Stratus era as well. This must be the coolest thing you have here. I the think so, yeah. Instant Grand Slam, Peter Dupree Rasmussen, DreamHack Marseille, Pro League Season 7, IEM Chicago, and then you ended with the Isol Pro League Season 8 home turf in Odense. What a run. Oh yeah. What a run. <laughs> That's pretty cool. This is probably the one that I, that I love the most. From all the things I have here. Yeah, yeah, the first one. The first one to do it, I think that's cool. Also the Satakis phrase when uh, you won. 
Oh yeah, yeah. Dude, that's actually pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. What is it? The best to ever best fucking do. I think do the this. best to ever fucking do. Yeah. Yeah. I think something like that. Yeah. This is actually from the winning notes. So where we won the Grand Slam, where my where I hugged my dad. Beth. It was like maybe a half a year, five months before he passed away. So this is like one of the oldest, like the newest pictures I have of him. And then I have one with my son above. So it's like dad and son, dad and son. Yes. You know, it's been kind of a thing that has been following my whole career that my my father was um, was suffering from cancer. So the whole idea of me, you know having to go to the major and play there and play, you know, to defend our championship and everything was like, it was, was super tough. Um, but his wish was just that he wanted me to, to do the things that make him proud. I came into this tournament with my father. Uh, yeah, he passed away just before I got here. And his last wish was that I, I went here. And so I really want to dedicate this, this win to my father. When I got there, it, it, it kind of felt like I got to my second family in some sense, you know, yeah. I, it, and it just felt really, Nice knowing that all the rivals that I had, you know, all the players that I was competing against, I think we know that we can put things aside if things get get serious. And for me, that was a really warm feeling. Um, so that was that was amazing, at least. With every year that passed, we began to wave goodbye to the legends that have made this game what it is today. Uh, this moment, this moment, uh, I feel it, I feel it, uh, I will a bit cry. This is, this is me, this is all of me here in, in, in one moment. I will remember this day for a good day. And with those foundation sets, we ushered in a new generation of competitors. Each with their own struggles, and journeys, a set of memories waiting to be told. I guess looking back at the early years, it really was all about the memories. If I take a look at all the pictures and all the memories, what would be my takeaway is that what an incredible, incredible journey we have done as a team, as an individual, and also like how big esport has become for people's lives. It's a big story, and we're all part of that story in Count Strike. Oh, I don't think I would have seen like one sixteenth of the world without Counter-Strike. Not only seeing other places has always been such a big honor for me, but just getting to see other cultures and, and see the different sides of humans depending on their backgrounds. It's, it's always been a big, big blessing for me. I think when it comes to greatest memories, being on a team and like really getting to have the bond with your teammates is probably like the thing I celebrate most. Other than that, man, always able to be pretty proud that I left most fit in the server. When I see this, um, this picture and all this badge, it kind of felt like, honestly, it was yesterday. I don't feel like it was more than 10 years ago, like there is no way. Yeah, I don't think uh, I still realize like how fast actually uh, the 10 years just uh, went. Looking at all these pictures, it reminds me of when I was at the Antwerp uh, major. I just hear the crowd roar and mm. I just started to cry. Like I oh, couldn't, really? I couldn't handle it. Because I thought back to when we were sitting on like gym hall or yeah, something small. with these chairs yep. and you know sitting. And now and it looks like this. You, you, yeah, exactly. Uh, and now it looks like that. It's just like half my life, you know. The journey was beautiful. You have an up and downs, up and downs, you know, like a roller coaster in this life. Esports, like a VP, show me the world. I spend with my team like more time than my family. 
I sit with them on the team speak, like eight, eight, sometimes 10 or 12 hours pay per day. I travel with them, I boot camp with them. I see them, you know, much more than my kids, than my, than my, than my wife. So we are like a family. In one time, <laughs> I can love them, and in one moment, I can hate them. But to be honest, I can say after many years, this is pro, you are not my friend, you are my brother, my friend. Carlos, I can teach you a lot of things, yeah. and not just about winning or earning money, but also yeah. like, it's more like stuff. how to work together and yeah, stuff. Yeah. I met my, I met my girlfriend. I was just gonna say, uh, yeah. it, it, it literally gave you gave your partner, <laughs> your girlfriend, <laughs> your your child. Yes. You have a son. Yeah. At some point, you're gonna <laughs> teach him to play CS. And, of course, I will. You know, that's how it goes down through the you know generations. I think knowing that the new game has has just launched and. In 10 years, maybe someone else will be sitting like we do and look back at how was he used to change their life. I am more thankful that you can ever become of Cisco because I've not only become a better player in the game and got my work from it, but I've grown as a person and done things that I would never expect to do. I have lost words. It's, it's everything to me. If I look back over the 20 years I have been playing, there's so many friendships and so many moments that I share with others. And that's why we're gonna take home. The trophies are nice, but when you look back, I think it's all the moments with people and all the joy you had and all everything you learned that's gonna stay with you the most. How many more years do you think you have a career? 10. Damn, bro, if I had 10 more years. <laughs> <laughs> Atores Fags, Cacerato, só dando fake ali, né? I will do it huh? all again. <laughs> will I do it all over again? Mandou tem. Please. I mean, I would in a heartbeat. <laughs> if I would do it one more time? Oh, yeah. yeah. Can we just rewind 10 years and then start over? <laughs> and I guess with that, it's time to say goodbye. Take it away, Shox. If you are new to Counter-Strike, and if you are coming to CS2, then I would recommend you should actually follow the ride because it's not only a game, it's a passion, it's a group, it's smile, it's happiness, it's emotions, it's tears. You're gonna live it, you're gonna press it, and everything is gonna change. Counter Strike is not only a game, it's a family. Né? É, senhoras e senhores, caramba, passou rápido, uma hora e meia aí de documentário, né? Gode demais, cadê o chat aí, né? Agora, agora posso botar vocês na tela aí novamente, né? Cara, é muito louco, né? Todas essas histórias aqui acabou, né? Todas essas histórias aí dos campeonatos e tudo, e velho, eu acho que é, é muito inspirador, né? Eu espero aí que... Eu escuto muito isso, né, de, pô, você acha que ainda tem espaço, você acha, né, é... tinha a época dos carteiros, dos marceneiros, dos leiteiros, do empreiteiro, do marceneiro, velho, eu garanto pra vocês, velho, eu não conheço muita coisa da vida, tá ligado, velho, eu sou, sabe, eu sou, sou um jovem aí, velho, mas eu nasci pra competição, tá ligado, velho, eu sou um competidor, e eu... Sei que a competição é o sonho, velho. Quando você assiste isso daqui, só é uma prova viva de que quantas finais a gente assistiu ao longo do CSGO em que você tinha o time dominante, o time que podia vencer, o time que era para vencer, enfrentando o Davi, tá ligado? Quantas situações, é óbvio, tem as eras, tem as eras. É muito difícil ganhar de uma SK, da LG no topo? É muito difícil. É muito difícil ganhar de uma Astralis? É muito difícil. É muito difícil ganhar do Manchester City? É muito difícil, tá ligado? Porém, quantas pessoas que chegaram ali sem ter sonho, no sentido de olhar para a competição e falar, pô, eu sou o favorito eu vim aqui para vencer, eu vou ganhar isso daqui, e de repente elas saíram de lá com a conquista, tá ligado? A vida é isso, velho, entendam, as pessoas vão querer que você não ache isso, 
em todos os sentidos, tá ligado, velho? Ah, eu não vou passar na faculdade, eu não mereço esse emprego, eu não vou conseguir essa pessoa que eu gosto, eu não vou alcançar aquela competição, ah, eu não vou começar a streamar, eu não vou me arriscar, tá ligado, velho? A vida é isso, saca, velho? A vida é você olhar e enquanto você continuar acreditando que não é possível, vai ter alguém novo, jovem, e que vai acreditar que aquilo é possível, tá ligado, velho? E vai estar tá no lugar que você poderia estar, tá, velho. Isso é uma coisa, velho, que não é do leiteiro, não é do carteiro. Vão falar que hoje é diferente, como sempre foi, saca? É o que eu brinco com vocês, velho. Os caras que andavam de caravela achavam que a caravela é foda. O cara que andava de carro achava que o carro é foda. Hoje você tá de avião, o cara acha que o avião é foda. E o erro do ser humano é sempre achar que o que ele tem naquele momento é o mais foda. E não tá errado, é foda. Mas sempre vai chegar algo novo sonhando o impossível e realizando, velho. Porque a gente é isso, saca? Então eu espero que quando vocês assistam uma partida e vê que tá 15 a 9 pro outro time, você acredita, tá ligado? Não por eles, por você. Porque quando você estiver assistindo, em algum momento vai acontecer. Eu não sei quantas, mano, centenas de partidas, eu fui assistir do meu time do coração, o time tava perdendo, saía aquele escanteio, aquela falta perto da área, aos 50 minutos do segundo tempo, e eu pensava, vai sair o gol, é agora nós vai empatar, nós vai ganhar. E a gente perdia, velho. Só que os dias que a gente empatou e que a gente virou e que a gente ganhou foi os dias mais insanos da minha vida. Seja assistindo, torcendo, seja competindo. Então, é isso que você precisa entender. No final das contas, você vai perder ou você vai ganhar. Faça até o final acreditando, velho. Vai para a escola acreditando que você vai conseguir. Vai para o trabalho acreditando que você vai conseguir. Vai para a competição acreditando que você vai conseguir. Porque no final das contas, velho, tanto faz. Você ganhar ou você perder, você no final das contas tem que acreditar que vai dar certo. Velho. Mesmo que seja só assistindo. Isso é uma coisa que eu levo todos os dias. As pessoas falam, não, mas não vai dar certo. Por que, que você está acreditando? Por que, que você está acreditando? E, velho, uma hora vai acontecer. Uma hora, velho, não tenho dúvida. Nós vamos voltar a ganhar a Copa do Mundo de futebol. Nós vamos voltar a ganhar a CS2, Counter Strike, né? Porque não é CS 1.6, CS é Counter Strike. Uma hora nós vai, tá ligado? Isso daí é muito louco, velho, né? Isso daqui, olhando esse... Esse, né? Retrospecto aqui do Counter Strike, velho. Do começo ao fim, hoje... A gente tá vivendo isso hoje, não é mais, né? É Counter Strike 2, mas é Counter Strike. Hoje, o cara que tava ali perdendo da Cloud9 na e 2018, hoje eliminou o possível maior jogador do CS2, o Donk, tá ligado? Alguém achou que ele ia conseguir? Talvez ele tenha achado que ele ia conseguir, tá ligado? E hoje ele esteve no lugar que o cara da Cloud9 estava em 2018. Então, não pense que ah, isso aí é coisa do leiteiro, do marceneiro, do açougueiro. Isso aqui é coisa da competição, velho. Logo hoje, hoje, você viu isso acontecer, tá ligado? E amanhã pode ser que aconteça de novo. Depois de amanhã de novo. Depois de amanhã, eu apenas te convido a viver num mundo em que você acredite, você vai se frustrar, você vai se irritar, você não vai querer nunca mais ver, mas você vai viver, velho, a vida é isso, não é? Se não fosse pra viver, não era vida, né? Amo vocês, obrigado por tudo, 